Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Kingdom greetings and grace and peace to each and every one of you. With love from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Prophet Tisdehima McLean here. <clears throat> With Kingdom Global Impact Network, whereby I preach the unadulterated and valuable word of God, legislating God's kingdom right here on earth. I am truly excited and ecstatic to be on here. Amen. Um, tonight I have a very interesting topic. It's going to be a continuation of what I ministered on the other day with none other than Prophet Darius Glover. So I do want to expound on this. Tonight's topic is entitled The Prophetic Ministry, The Apostolic, and The Prophetic Ministry, The Eagles and the Ox. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting um, message tonight. Uh, I'm going to try to execute this as expeditiously and efficiently as possible. So I would greatly appreciate if you all just begin to share, start a watch party, invite a friend, um, let someone know that we are on, okay? I know most people are mostly on Clubhouse nowadays. Are mostly on Clubhouse nowadays. So, um, I didn't even get to do the finish the invitation. It's okay. <clears throat> most people are on Clubhouse nowadays. So, um, you know, I try to be very uh, mindful of your time. We're going to open up in prayer. If you can, just go ahead and represent your city and your state. I'm going to use my... Um, my, my laptop to just send some more invitations out. Amen. So represent your city and your state in the meantime. To God be the glory. I want to thank you all for joining me. I'm going to also take some time out to pray with and for many of you on this evening. Amen. <laughs> hey, I see. Listen, I see my apostolic and my prophetic brother on here. God bless you. I see none other than... um. The man of God, Jabez, how are you? Man of God, you want to jump in? Let me know if you want to jump in. I'll invite you in, man of God. <clears throat> just so you know, if you would like to talk for just a few minutes, just release uh, a, a word real quickly for five minutes. I would greatly appreciate it. But just let me know if you can. <laughs> all right, I see. Look, all the good preachers are in Houston. <laughs> I need to move to Texas. <laughs> Houston, Texas is in the house. Amen. Amen. I'm truly excited. Great to uh, have you guys on here. Yes, you're right, man of God. It's only for the Apple stylic people. <laughs> that was funny. Yes, it is true. Man of God, let me know if you want to jump in really quickly. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and enjoy, just invite a few people. Yes, Kodisha. I, listen, I miss, I really miss you guys. I'm really 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 contemplating moving there i'm really my wheels are turning my wheels are really high sweetie pie hi i see tiara i hope you're not mad at me tiara i love you sweetheart <laughs> Eno said come on down <laughs> yes i will <coughs> I absolutely will. Let me just go ahead and send some more invitations out. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started. Amen. I'm so excited. Men of God, I do need to move down there. I tell people all the time, you know, uh, New York, even though I love it, it is not my prophetic grid. It, is, it really isn't. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. And Gordo, all the people are saying, yes, move to Texas. So I'm, I'm going to pray and ask the Lord about that because it's really, really been resting on my heart. Okay, okay, sweetheart. Yes, it's really been resting on my heart. Um, so I'm thinking about it. All right, guys, go ahead and like and share. All right, so tonight's topic is um, entitled The Eagle and the Ox. I'm going to talk to you about the prophetic ministry. All right, the prophetic ministry. And I'm going to also... I'm going to also open up in prayer. Amen. I know the men of God, Jabez and I, we shared on so, uh, the platform as well on um, Clubhouse. I see my brother on here. I see him. I saw the little heart. So I'm going to shout you out, men of God. God bless you. I love you. Apostle Tracy Barlow in the house. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> see, all of them is from Texas. All of them is from Texas. Amen. I love you guys. I really, really need to come down there and visit. Let me just go ahead and acknowledge a few of you. I also see, all right, Contessa in the house. God bless you. I love you. I see Sheila Jones. I see Pearl Das in the house. I also see Patricia Pat in the house. God bless you. Amen. I see Kodisha Porter, Eno, Akun. Amen. Chrissy Lynn, I love you. Uh, Christine Taylor, I love you. Amen. I see Wendy Burrows. 
God bless you, Wendy. I see Anne Marie Gordon. I love you, woman of God. I have been praying for you. You have been in my thoughts all week long. You really have. So I am praying for you. And I'll talk to you afterwards, woman of God. <laughs> all right. Let me just put the right information here. <clears throat> Tonight's message is going to be very interesting. I see Pearl Doss all the way from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. God bless you. I also see uh, on here... Uh, 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 let's go ahead. Angela Wong, my cousin, Angela Wong. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for joining me. I also see, uh, Will Drink and Apostle. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I see, I see, um, <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> Don't beat me up, brother. Don't beat me up. I'm still trying to get your first name, Oliver. <laughs> the bearded man, Oliver. God bless you. Amen. I don't want to be calling the wrong name. I don't want you to beat me up, man of God. <laughs> so please bear with me. Amen. Uh, you told me like twice before, so, you know, it, it's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm going to get it right next time. I, for some reason in my mind, it, it, your name is Allenville, but I don't want to say it. I don't want to get it wrong. So please just say it for me one more time. I'm going to make sure I, I pencil it down this time. <laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Listen, guys. Laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good for the soul. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> All right. Let me just go ahead and get started. We're going to open up in prayer. And, and, and Oliveville. <laughs> I'm going to call you Oliveville for tonight. <laughs> I'm going to call you Oliveville for tonight. Amen. But Oliveville, um, would you like to come on just to talk for a minute? If not, it's okay. I get it. Um, I also see my apostolic brother, man of God. I was talking about you last night. I really, really do miss you, Apostle McCoy. Amen. My covenant brother. Listen, this guy is a fireball. God bless you. I love you. Say is also in the house. Amen. Tonight's message is going to be very interesting. I promise you. It really is. <clears throat> it really is. And I'm just going to expound on uh, what I min uh, ministered on the few few days ago. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing on this evening. It's going to be a blessing. Amen. So I want you to get connected. Okay, you're at work. Men of God, please tell me your name so I don't call you Allenville. <laughs> uh, I don't want to call you Allenville. So you got to tell me your name one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> hey, God bless you. Williams in the house. God bless you. You know, the Christians, we, we need to smile a little bit more. You know, we, we need to smile and relax a little bit more. Amen. We don't do enough of that. <clears throat> okay. Adeline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was calling you Allenville, Lord. <laughs> oh, I don't butcher the man's name. Adeline. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> All right. Men of God, I promise you I'm going to get it right this time. <clears throat> All right. Let me go ahead and get started. Let me get serious now. <clears throat> let me go ahead and get serious. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> All right. Let me go ahead. All right. <laughs> That's right. Give it face a break. You know, I, I don't know. I don't like uptight Christians. It's okay to smile. It's okay to have balance. You know, <clears throat> we don't do sour face over here. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let me go ahead and get started. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, I thank you for everybody that is on this live broadcasting. Lord God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Father God, there is none like you. There is none that can compare to you. Lord God, we magnify you for this is the day that you have made. God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for, oh God, for this time that you have called us to. Lord God, I pray, oh God, that tonight's message will bless your people. Tonight's message will 
get into the hearts of your people. That it will germinate into their hearts. It will change their perspective. That Lord God, that you begin to shift them into a new place, into new dimensions. Lord God, I thank you right now, oh God, that you're taking them into higher heights and deeper depths into you. Lord God, I pray, oh God, tonight, hallelujah, that as we bring forth this apostolic and a prophetic message, that Lord God, that you will cause their destinies, oh God, to be shifted. I pray tonight, oh God, for a pandemic shift. I thank you tonight, oh God, hallelujah, that you are recalibrating their lives, God. I thank you, Lord God, that there shall be unprecedented favor, un un unmerited miracles, oh God. Hallelujah, my God, an unprecedented open doors, amen, that should be recalibrated in their lives. Lord God, I thank you right now for every person that is listening. I thank you right now that God, you're beginning to do a new thing. According to your word in Isaiah 43, 19, I shall do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. And Father God, we praise you tonight. Lord God, I thank you right now that God, that you are shifting things in your life. I thank you, Holy Ghost, that with this apostolic and prophetic teaching, that Lord God, hallelujah, that you begin to thrust them into their destinies. <clears throat> Thrust them and activate their prophetic destinies. I pray tonight, God, that their gifts, oh God, will be stirred on the inside of them. God, don't only stir the gifts on the inside of them, but Lord God, I pray, oh God, that you will literally catapult them into another dimension, another playing field. That Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that God, hallelujah, their lives, hallelujah, will be shifted and changed. I thank you, oh God, for supernatural transformation. I pray, oh God, that they will begin to walk into their kingdom identity. Entities, uh, that they may know that they are his and join his with you. Uh, that they may know that they are the sons of God. Uh, and that God that will begin to walk uh, in dominion, power, and authority. Uh, I thank you, oh God, hallelujah, that you shall give us keys to the kingdom uh, as you did with Peter, oh God. Uh, I thank you, oh God, that yes, God, uh, that we are now shifting from a church age uh, into a kingdom age, God. Uh, that, Lord God, we begin to see uh, your hands upon our lives. Uh, that, Lord God, that we may know that you are God and you are the son sovereign king in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord God I pray tonight God for those that are listening on the broadcasting that may have felt like God that they don't know their identity hallelujah they don't know their calling they don't know what you have called them to do I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord God that you begin to open up your eyes of your understanding yes God I pray for supernatural downloads that there shall be an activation and impartation that begin to even happen on the broadcasting I pray tonight God hallelujah that there shall all also be deliverance uh, that will take place on the broadcast tonight. Uh, yes, God, I thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, that God, that you are doing a new thing in their lives. Uh, and we thank you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen, amen and amen. I feel uh, such an anointing tonight. Listen, I want you guys to go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Hallelujah. Go ahead and like and share. To God be the glory. Go ahead and like and share to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we thank you tonight, God. Father, we thank you tonight, God. We pray, oh God, hallelujah, that the fire of God, hallelujah, will begin to, oh God, burn on the, uh, burn, hallelujah, on the broadcasting and touch your lives of your people tonight. Come on, somebody type in the text box, Lord. Hallelujah, send fresh fire. Lord God, send fresh fire. Let it in your I believe, amen, that there is no distance in prayer. Ask the Lord tonight for fresh fire, fresh wind, that God will begin to do something in your lives. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. We cannot be satisfied tonight with mediocrity. We cannot be satisfied where we are tonight. We've got to ask God to do something fresh. Say, Lord God, I need something fresh to be done in my life, God. We need fresh wind and fresh fire, God. Lord God, we need a stirring in our souls. Lord God, we need you to answer us. Us. Hallelujah, God, we need you to show up for us. Lord God, we need answers. Lord God, we tap into what? Hallelujah, this apostolic and prophetic grace. We tap into the anointing, God. For we understand that yesterday's anointing. Hallelujah, to God be the glory that it cannot do for today. And so, Lord God, tonight, come on, guys, like and share. Tonight, God, hallelujah, we're asking, oh God, hallelujah, that your anointing will begin to fall upon this broadcasting and fall afresh upon us. Hallelujah, fall upon our homes. Fall upon our businesses. Uh, hallelujah. Fall upon us, God. <coughs> Until we can see a supernatural and divine manifestation.
visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, hallelujah, that you will begin to use your people and that God, you will begin to send forth the harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, send forth the harvest. Send forth the harvest. God, go ahead and like and share in the name of Jesus. Lord God, send hallelujah. Level shut to the Makaya. Send the people tonight, God. Hallelujah, that their lives may be changed. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will begin to have a desire to learn more of you, to know you. That they will begin to know you in a greater way, Father. Lord God, we give you praise tonight. We know, oh God, hallelujah, that you are answering us now, God. We know tonight that you are answering us expeditiously. We know tonight, God, hallelujah, that you're doing a, a new thing on our behalf. In in the mighty name of Jesus, let it be Makaya. Let it be Makaya. Come on, somebody. How many hungry people do we have on our broadcasting tonight? Hallelujah. How many hungry people say, Lord, I am just hungry for you, God. I am not on here for a prophecy. I'm not on here, amen, just for a quick fix. But I'm here to learn of you. I am here tonight. Hallelujah. To receive what God has in store for me. I am here tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. To be an active participant. <clears throat> Of what God is doing in the land, God. Shedabo Satamakaya. Come on, somebody. Let them all shut tight. Lebrekete lebrekete yo shut. I want you to go ahead and do me a favor and begin to share this broadcasting. Begin to share this broadcasting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. We're going to ask for the Holy Ghost. For it is the Holy Ghost that makes the difference. It is your anointing of God that makes the difference. Come on, somebody. It is the anointing of God that makes the difference. It is the anointing of God that destroys the yoke. Are oh, you hearing me tonight? It is the anointing of God. Hallelujah. That destroys the yoke. It is the anointing of God. Hallelujah. That stirs us up. That will cause us sinner. Amen. To get saved. How many hungry people do we have on the broadcast tonight? And say, Lord God, I'm tired of the mediocrity, Lord. Hallelujah. I am tired. Hallelujah. Of doing church as usual. God, I am tired. Hallelujah. I'm tired of doing church as usual. But Lord God, in my Sunday, Lord God, I need you to do something new and something fresh in me. Come on, guys. Go ahead and like and share. Come on, go ahead and like and share. Hallelujah, I believe tonight uh, that God is stirring up. Uh, he's stirring up a fresh anointing. Uh, that God is tonight in restoring your glory. Uh, that God is repairing your life. Uh, hallelujah, come on somebody. This is the time uh, that God is a time of refreshing. Uh, for some of you, amen, have been dealing with weariness. Uh, some of you have been dealing with burdens. Uh, some of you have been dealing with oppression. Uh, but the Lord said, I am sending tonight the times of refreshing. Uh, and that is why he's sending, hallelujah, the apostolic and the prophetic voices. Uh, hallelujah, we're speaking to your life uh, and begin to impart in you. The refreshments may come according to Joel chapter 2 and 25. It says, Hallelujah, glory to God. It says, Hallelujah, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah, glory to God. You shall dream dreams and you shall begin to prophesy. Oh, you hear me tonight? He says, I will begin to restore unto you the years of the canker worm, the palmer worm, amen, has stolen in the name of Jesus. Oh, you hear me tonight? Glory to God. There are some things that have stolen our virtue. Makaya has stolen our glory, has stolen our joy, has stolen some things for y'all in our lives. But God said, I shall restore it back unto you. Come on, this is a time of restoration. This is a time of reformation. This is a time of reinvigoration. This is a time of revelation. It's a time, oh God, that resuscitates us. Are oh, you hearing me tonight? Hallelujah, this is an era that we are in the evils and the eagles and the ox. What do I mean by that? Is that God is sending forth his apostolic and prophetic leaders. Amen. To literally come together to be able to push us and catapult us into a whole other dimension. Are you hearing me tonight? What do I mean by tonight? The eagles and the ox. Let it about shut up, Makaya. Let Zebra and Shaya Makaya. Hallelujah, when you have the eagles and the ox anointing, it simply means, amen, that God, hallelujah, is causing, amen, his apostles and prophets to come together to establish the government of God. What do I mean by that? We are in a time sense of God where we see a lot of things going on in the body of Christ. We see a lot of people, amen, falling away from the faith. We see a great apostasy. 
we see uh, individuals in the church, uh, their lives are not lining up, uh, hallelujah, to what they are professing. Uh, why do I, why am I saying that? Uh, we are in a time and dispensation. Uh, we are now beginning to see a lot of false prophets, uh, hallelujah, and they are rising in this time. Uh, they are rising and amen, uh, hallelujah, not only they are rising, but also we hear the voice of the python uh, that is also arising. Uh, and the Bible says, amen, and many will begin to have an itchy ears, uh, hallelujah, to hear, hallelujah, what is so for themselves. They will begin to have uh, an itchy ears to hear uh, what they want to hear. Amen. We are in a generation that is not hungry for God. A generation that do not want to seek God. A generation, hallelujah, that don't seek after God. Don't, don't press uh, hallelujah after God's presence. Uh, hallelujah. So God, amen, is saying in this hour I am raising up the eagles and the ox uh, to bring about a reformation in the land. Uh, hallelujah. So that they may know that I am God. Uh, I am still the same God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, today, yesterday and forevermore. Uh, what do I I mean by that, that God has not changed. God is immutable. God is unchangeable. The Bible talks about a particular prophet, uh, and his name was Prophet uh, 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 Prophet John. Hallelujah, John the prophet. Uh, the Bible says, Amen, that he was also a prophet. Uh, and Prophet uh, 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 John, uh, he began to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, the Bible said that Prophet John, Amen, uh, and John the Baptist, uh, he spent his time in the wilderness. Uh, why did he spend his time in the wilderness? Uh, he spent his time in the wilderness uh, to be able to get instructions for God. Uh, anytime we are talking about wilderness experiences, uh, we are talking about a place of isolation, uh, a place of seclusion, uh, where God incubates his prophets, uh, hallelujah, in the wilderness, uh, so that they may be there, amen. Uh, the reason why he has them in the wilderness, uh, because they are getting downloads and impartations, uh, hallelujah, and infusions from God, uh, hallelujah, and the John the Baptist, amen, of this hour, they are the ones, to God be the glory, uh, that are in the incubation, uh, they are the ones, amen, that hear the word of the Lord, uh, the Bible Bible said that John the Baptist, amen, uh, he began to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, he, he said, make his path straight. Uh, he began to speak about the message of repentance. Uh, hallelujah, are you hear me today? Mm. He began to speak about the message of repentance. Uh, what did he begin to do? Uh, he prepared the way with simply means uh, that he dealt with the constructs. Uh, he dealt with preparing the way. Uh, he dealt with the foundation. Uh, and that's what God wants us to do today. Uh, he wants us to deal with the foundational issues. Uh, there are foundational issues, amen, uh, that we are faced with in the body of Christ. God's, go ahead and like and share. We have foundational issues uh, that we see in the body of Christ. Uh, hallelujah, that we are perplexed with. Uh, hallelujah, we are in a time and generation. Uh, with the people of God, they don't want to hear the word of God. You come on here and begin to teach. They don't want to hear the word of God. Why? Because the Bible said there are many false prophets that will begin to rise up in the land and they will take preeminence and precedence over the voice of the true prophets. And while the true prophets, amen, while they are preparing the way of the Lord and while they are heralding, make his path straight, and while their mouths are open, hallelujah, there are many people, amen, hallelujah, that they will not go in the direction of of where the true prophets are speaking. Uh, hallelujah. Be simply because uh, we have become a generation, oh God. Uh, we have become a people of my Shale Baha'i. Uh, that we have set up for mediocrity. Uh, but God is now calling every man on uh, my Sunday. Uh, hallelujah. To begin to repent. <clears throat> And I'm going to bring this message. Uh, I'm going to begin to bring this message. Uh, hallelujah. Tonight are the eagles and the ox. Uh, and why they are so relevant. Uh, and why it is so important. Uh, amen. That we begin to have the prophets uh, and the apostles in this day and age. Uh, let me give you a little bit of description. And why it is, it is so important. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Bible said according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. God begins to share, share. Go ahead and like and share. He says, he said it like this, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, hallelujah, and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man and unto the stature and the fullness of God. I want to begin to stop right there. The Bible said that he called these offices together for the perfecting of the saints. Saints of God, may I submit to you today that while, amen. God is raising up these offices. Uh, hallelujah. In the land. It is to perfect the body of Christ. Uh, but truth be told, there are many individuals uh, that don't want to be perfected. Uh, there are many individuals in the land today. Uh, hallelujah. They don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says, amen, that there shall also come a time uh, where there will be a scarcity uh, of hearing the voice of God. Uh, there shall be a scarcity uh, where people will not, amen, give us heed. Uh, hallelujah. To the sound doctrine. Uh, but they will begin to give heed uh, to seducing doctrine. They want feel-good messages. They want inspirational messages.
messages. Hallelujah to God be the glory. They don't mind the gossip. They don't mind the gossip. They don't mind the next latest church news. Come on, somebody. I know you see it on social media. They don't mind the gossip. They don't mind the scandal. Hallelujah. That is the time that we are in right now. We are church. Amen. I don't care about souls. Hallelujah. We're in a time that I don't care about souls. We are more concerned about scandal. Hallelujah. And that is what we give our attention to. Hallelujah. The masses are drawn. Hallelujah. When it comes to the scandal, the masses are drawn. Amen. When it comes to the false prophets. And the church, amen, needs to be perfected. Because when I begin to look at the condition of the church, we begin to find that the church, amen, is not where they should be. Hallelujah. If God was supposed to come back today, the church is not prepared. Hallelujah. The bride of Christ is not prepared. I don't know where the message is going in this direction. But the body of Christ is not prepared. Amen. For the return of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, saints of God, we are looking for prophets, amen, to preach what we want to hear. We are looking for prophets in the land that will tell us that we're going to get a house, a car, a land, and a van. Are you hearing me today? But what God is saying in this hour, hey, if you want to know the mark of a true prophet, a true prophet, amen, they'll begin to talk to you about the heart, the mind, and the will of God. True prophets are not concerned, hallelujah, about their branding themselves. They're not concerned, amen, hallelujah, about the titles and the accolades of the world. When you're talking about a true prophet that represents God, hallelujah, they come from with the zeal of the Lord. They are willing to tell you amen I thus say it this Lord are you hearing me today? But we are in a time and day and age. We have this watered down gospel. We have this watered down Christianity. Hallelujah to God be the glory. We have this Christianity. Hallelujah that wants to make people feel good. What do I mean by that? I'm going to break it down to you tonight. Hallelujah we have a Christianity that tells people that you can be mediocre and expect revival. Hallelujah, we have a Christianity that tells people that you can live any kind of way. You can live like a harlot. You can live like a bastard. You can live like an orphan. You can live like a wolf. And it will be morally acceptable. As long as you go to theological seminary, it is moral and morally acceptable. As long as you have a church, it is morally acceptable. But what God is saying in the day and age, I'm taking down idols because I'm looking for the prophets Amen. And the eagles and the ox to come together. Amen. To begin to aim a Sunday to re establish and build the altars. And once again, we are in a time and day and age, saints of God. Hallelujah. With the modern day prophets, they are more concerned about building the stage more than they are building an altar. Come on, let me say it once again. We are more concerned about building a stage more than we are building an altar. We care more about our names. And it is a shame in the body of Christ. We care more about our titles. Hallelujah. And it is a shame in the body of Christ. We care more about the money. Hallelujah. That we have in a bank account. Are you hearing me tonight? And it is a shame in the body of Christ. But I want you to understand today that God is not pleased and God is not mocked. Are you hearing me tonight? And God is saying he is not mocked. And that's why he had to allow Hallelujah, the church to go through this pandemic because he's calling back for the church to be in a place of divine supernatural. Hallelujah. Real alignment. He said, I want my church to be prepared that when I do come back, amen, that I will find you glory to God, that you will begin to have all in your lamp, that you will not, amen, have to borrow oil. This is not the seed of saints of God to be running off of borrowed oil. It is not the seed of saints of God. Hallelujah, to operate off an oil. That you had 10 years ago. You cannot rely on your pastor's oil. You cannot rely on the bishop's oil. You cannot rely on the bishop's oil. You cannot rely on the prophet's oil. You've got to have your own oil. And what am I saying tonight? You've got to have your own relationship. You've got to have your own prayer life. I know you want me to sound fancy tonight, but I'm not going to do that. He wants you to begin to have your own prayer life. Hallelujah to God be the glory. He wants you to begin to rebuild your altars. Hallelujah, get back into the holies of holies. Hallelujah, where is your incense? Hallelujah, where is your scent before God? Do you have a fragrance before God? When was the last time you built an altar? When was the last time you got Say, I'm offering up. Hallelujah, my sacrifices of praise unto you. Hallelujah, my Sunday. Hallelujah, when was the last time your worship became as a sweet smelling savor unto God? When was the last time you made yourself as a sacrifice unto God? 
And come on, come on, somebody. You're not about Shana Makaya. But he said the body of Christ. Holy, we're not even halfway there. We're not even at the halfway there when it comes to perfecting the saints. Because we're still messy if you were to ask me. We're still at a place, saints of God. Holy, to God be the glory, we don't have an appetite for God. And if you want to know the measure of a man of God, if you want to know the measure of a true Christian, check their appetite that they have for God. Do they love the things of the world more than they love the things of God? The Bible said, hallelujah, where your treasure is, and there will your heart be also. If you want to tell the truth, saints of God, there are many of us today, amen, that don't have a heart. Let not about shut up for the things of God. We don't have a heart for the things of God. Yes, that I'm a kaya. In fact, we don't even want to be edified. How do I know that? Because we didn't even we did not even fulfill Ephesians chapter 4 and 11. We don't even want to be edified. Come on, saints of God. We're all in a time and day and age where all we care about is um, entertainment. We want entertainment. We want entertainment. We don't want edification. But you see, true prophets, amen. When they come forth, amen, with the world, they come to edify you. They come to edify you, amen, uh, concerning the futuristic plans of God. Uh, they come to tell you to repent. Uh, they come to tell you to get your house in order. Uh, they come to tell you the mind of God. Uh, they come to tell you where you are. Uh, they come to tell you whether you're working circumspect. Uh, they come to tell you whether you're fulfilling the will of God. Uh, are you hearing me, saints of God? And about Sunday, uh, and I know this is not a popular broadcasting. Uh, you know why, saints of God? Uh, you know why this is, uh, this is not a popular broadcasting? Because repentance is not a popular message. Mm. I'm telling you, saints of God, if John the Baptist was alive in the earth realm, if John the Baptist was walking in the earth realm, you would say that his message is irrelevant. You would say that his message, amen, hallelujah, we heard that already. But I, come on, somebody, I'm going to remind you that there's going to be many people, amen, that you're going to cry out for the word of God, and you won't be able to hear the word of God. You're going to cry out for broadcasting like these. You're going to cry out for broadcasting like these. It's going to come a time, saints of God. You're going to begin to look for the true prophets uh, and you won't be able to locate them. Uh, you know why, saints of God? Because Amen, God is going to have his prophets uh, to do his will and his pleasure and they are going to be hidden once again. <clears throat> They're going to be hidden once again. And God is going to allow these individuals uh, to be left to their own reprobate mind. Uh, hallelujah, we have a generation of reprobates. Uh, hallelujah, and this is not a message uh, of condemnation. Uh, but the reality is like this. Uh, hallelujah, you're going to begin to look uh, and search for the true prophet. Uh, and you're going to begin to say, Lord, uh, if that true prophet can just hear that word once again. Uh, and we will not be able to hear that word. Because uh, we don't want to be perfected. Uh, we don't want to be edified. Uh, we don't want to sit under the voice. Uh, under the voice of a teacher. <clears throat> we want somebody, we want to treat the prophets like they're some kind of genie. If we want to be honest, saints of God, we treat the prophets uh, as if we are some kind of genie. We, 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 we want to rub the prophets uh, in a crystal ball uh, as if this is some kind of divination, uh, as if this is some kind of magic spell, uh, as if this is some kind of soothsaying. Uh, uh, and that's what we want, saints of God. Uh, we want to rub the little crystal ball uh, and tell me about my future because, amen, we don't want to do anything for it. Uh, we don't want it to inquire, uh, God to require anything from us. Uh, but once you said yes to God, uh, how do you that yes was going to cost you everything? Uh, the Bible said, amen, we got to be in the fellowship of his suffering but we want the stage but we don't want the suffering we want the hand of God but we don't want the benefits of God but we don't want the suffering we want the title and the accolades but we don't want the suffering of God you've got to suffer to go through some things in order for God to be able to use you Hallelujah. in order for God to see you as fit and fit for the kingdom and qualified. Hallelujah. He got to, you gotta suffer some things. You gotta suffer some lack. Yellow shut up there are some things you're going to have to suffer. There are some things you're going to have to go through. There are some things you're going to have to endure. Are you hearing me, saints of God? It's about endurance. And to be all come into the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. Unto the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto the measure of the full stature of God. Let it all shut up, I begin to ask God a question. I said, Lord, why is it? Why is it that when it comes to the real prophets, why is it that the people don't want to hear? Why is it that people want to hear? And every single time he reminds me of the scripture. I'm going to get into the text. He reminds me of the scripture. He says, narrow is the gate. 
Narrow is the way that leads, amen, to salvation. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there will be many saints of God that will find themselves in that way. There will be many, amen, that as we are crying aloud and as we are spirit out, as we are waking up the watchmen in this hour, there are going to be many individual saints of God that they will not give heed to our sound doctrine. They will not give heed to the, the, the epistles of the apostle Paul. Hallelujah to God be the glory. They're going to awaken and, and begin to awaken the prophets. Hallelujah for themselves. Yet the son of Akaya. The God says uh, that many of these prophets have spoken and they have said when I did not say, uh, I didn't authorize them. Uh, and I said, Lord, what does it seem like uh, that we are more in love with the false prophets uh, than we are with the prophets, amen, that are speaking the truth? Hallelujah, because why? Because truth offends your flesh. Truth offends your flesh. Because the Bible says it like this. That the law of the spirit. Hallelujah. Cannot, is not subjected to the law of the things of God. And neither indeed can it be. Because we are in a time. That we love, hallelujah, carnality. More than we love the things of God. More than we love the things of God. But when you are uh, under a false prophet, false prophet saints of God, uh, they put you with yokes uh, around your necks that uh, you will not be free. Uh, they, they bind you with yokes. Uh, how do you that you will not be free of? Uh, and you, you, they will rather submit themselves uh, to autocratic uh, leadership. Uh, leadership, amen, but they, uh, they have to yield themselves to. They will rather yield themselves, uh, how do you, to repressive regimes uh, and systems. Uh, they will rather yield themselves uh, to a system of fascism and I'm saying God why is it that we don't want to hear the truth why is it that we don't want to hear the truth we don't want to hear the truth and that is the reality saints of God the reality is that we are in a time and dispensation how many that there are many people that will not give heed will not give heed to the truth but I'm going to tell you why God is raising up why he is raising up the prophets in this hour. And tonight, I think I'm going to go talk to you about the, the nature of a prophet. The nature of a prophet. And why he's raising up the eagles. I may say the ox for later. But I'm going to tell you why he's raising up the eagles. Which is the, the prophet. So let me begin to tell you. I said it on last week. Not last week. A few days ago. I said eagles. Eagles are our king of birds. They are the king of birds. I'm going to teach you tonight. They are the king of the birds. Guys, go ahead and like and share. Hallelujah. Which simply means that they are the ones. They are the king of the birds. They carry a level of authority. Which means that they are not common birds. They're not common animals. They're not common animals. They, they, the, the magnitude of which they carry. Thank you so much for sharing on Chrissy Lynn. The magnitude of which they carry as of the king of the birds is that they are not like the rest of them. Their identity, their DNA, the way that they are built, the way that they begin to operate are different. They are considered as those that are the royal priesthood. Royal priesthood, when God calls a prophet, he calls you to be peculiar. Why are prophets peculiar? Because prophets carry such an intelligence. They carry an intelligence and intel in the realm of the spirit. Common birds do not have the ability to fly and ascend to certain dimensions. So there are limited information when it comes to them. Thank you so much for the love, Chrissy Lynn. It is limited information. What do I mean by that? When they are the king of the birds, they operate at a level of dominion and authority. Level of dominion and authority. Prophets have dominion. They have authority. Are you hearing me today, sense of God? And I know this seems simplistic, but I'm ministering to our various audience tonight. So they are they carry an authority to deal with territories, to deal with certain territorial uh, powers. They have the ability to do what's called a spiritual mapping. A spiritual mapping. You may not have heard me mention that phraseology before. Now, people may say that is not doctrinally correct because where do I see that in the Bible? But when you are talking about a spiritual mapping, uh, individuals who had that grace to do what was called spiritual mapping has the ability, amen, to 
uh, understand and navigate the skies. They know how to navigate the skies. What do I mean by navigating the skies? <clears throat> navigating the skies simply means that they have power over territories. They know how to deal with territorial uh, demons and principalities. There's a certain grace that uh, prophets carry to be able to deal with certain things in the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying that? They are king of birds. That when they, when God raises up a prophet, he's raising them up to deal with what? Territories. So they're not only called to prophesy into your life individually. No, he calls them to deal with principalities, which simply means I call them to deal with systems. Systems. I spoke to you recently about Jehu. Jehu is one of the prophets that's called, that's considered, almost considered like a king of the birds. He was one that was anointed to deal with a system, which means Jezebel's house, Jezebel's dynasty. He dealt with Jezebel. Jezebel dealing with Jezebelic system is a principality. And this is very challenging to deal with because you're dealing with ancient spirits. Huh? So when prophets are emerging, they're not emerging simply because there are all there are, are, are generals that are dying. No, they're not emerging because their generals are dying. They're not emerging because they are the next big voice. They're not emerging uh, simply to have a great title. They're not emerging for the purposes, huh? <clears throat> for the purposes of, of to see who's the next big person. No, they are emerging simply because God is saying. I have given them the great commission. They are the king of the birds. I have given them an authority even now to deal with systems that the generation before did not tackle and did not deal with. Huh? We are dealing with systems. What do I mean by that? Prophets are, and apostles are called to what we call the, set, the, uh, the mountains of the Lord. They are called to particular spheres. The seven mountains of the Lord. What do I mean by that? They're called to governmental systems. They're called to the marketplace. They're called into these different systems to be able to make an impact and a change and a reformation. We, are, we did not see uh, the generation prior where they dropped the ball. He's saying that I call them, <clears throat> amen, to such a time as this to deal with systems that they did not deal with before. So that way... <clears throat> Our government, while that way we see, we'll see issues in our government, we see issues, that's right, in our nations. Now, we can't deal with them. Why? Because the prophets are not in position. People think that prophets is just to tell me about my house, my, my house land, um, and caravan. That's not what this is about. We're dealing with systems because principalities what they will do if we allow them, they're going to always be here because they are eternal beings. But we have the ability to be able to suppress and have dominion over these systems. What do I mean by that? Even Jesus himself, when he came into the earth realm, I want you to begin to share this. When he came into the earth realm, one of the things that Jesus did is that he dealt with old systems. He dealt with patterns. <clears throat> He dealt with legalistic systems and patterns. He dealt with the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees that had a religious mindset where there was no movement, there was no change. So Jesus had to come in the earth realm as a prophet to do what? To do what? To be able to bring forth that reformation. And he came up against a system that's why there was so much resistance when it came to the life of Christ. That's why prophets go through so much resistance. Because you are one of the king of the birds. Listen, maybe this message is a little bit too, too apostolic in nature. I want you to understand this. When you are a prophet, you ascend at a certain playing field. You know how to conquer. Here's my next, here's my next a face you know how to conquer the skies prophets are not only king of the birds that carry dominion and authority so as you are king of the birds you carry dominion and authority but you also are a ruler a 
of the sky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna bring this, drop these nuggets here, and I'm, I'm gonna stop and then pray and get off. Uh, uh, and and then they're also ruler of the skies. Ruler of the skies. What do I mean by that? They are rulers of the sky, which simply means they have the ability to operate at a certain dimension. They not only operate in dominion and authority, but they are multi-dimensional. Prophets are multi-dimensional. They know how to tackle things. Uh, they know how to tackle things here on earth. Huh? They know how to tackle things as it relates to the second heavens. And they also know how to tap into the heavenlies. They're multidimensional. Huh? And it requires a certain ranking. It requires a certain uh, uh, a level of authority to be able to do so. That's why not everyone carries the mysteries of God. You've got to be a ruler of the sky to carry mysteries. What do I mean by that? You cannot be a prophet if you are at a low level. You cannot be a tr you cannot be an effective prophet. I see my brother on here. God bless you. I see Apostle Lamar. I love you, brother. <clears throat> you cannot be an effective prophet if if you are just surfaced. If all we do is just be surfaced and secular, you listen, and, and you the secularism that we see that's going on today. You know, prophets that call themselves prophets, but they're more concerned about branding and marketing. That is not what prophets do. Your surface level. That's why he said, that's why he said, watch this. He said to uh, 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 Apostle John, he said to him, come up hither. Why? He's saying, I don't want you to be one dimensional. It is good that now you know doctrine. It is good that you have walked with me, which we see many people do today. You know doctrine, you're theologically correct, you've been to seminary, you know the word, you, you know you, you know how you've mastered church. That's right, Prophet that's Madeline. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, woman of God. You 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 master church, you you know you master the lingo and the linguistics of ministry. You've done all of that now, but now I need to challenge you to come up hither. Because now you are operating at a different, a different dimension. A different dimension. Because only those that operate at a high plane field are those that carries mysteries. That carries mysteries. That's why we see that there are many prophets that don't have the revelation for this next move of God. Why? Because you're surfaced. Surfaced. And what we do, we chase the surface preachers. We don't want to get into the word of God. We lack depth and dimension. We lack revelation. That's why we don't know the heart, the mind, and the will of God. Of what he wants to do. It is a shame that even witches and warlocks know what it means to be multidimensional. What do I know by, what do I mean by that? They, they have tapped into, they have even tapped into our own doctrine. And they, they, they have used it. And they've manipulated it. Why? Because even witches know how to tap into mysteries. Because they don't, they don't settle. They don't settle to be one dimensional. How do they tap into mysteries illegally? Watch this. I'm going to show you how they tap into uh, uh, dimensions. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. <clears throat> how and how they are able to do this even off of our own word. One of the things they begin to do is that they, they study the scripture and they begin to apply the principle. They begin to apply the principle. They apply the principle of the word. And they even go as far as to uh, tap into other books that has not been incorporated to the Bible. We've, we've heard about the book of Jas Jasser um, and then I got Apostle Lamar. Help me out. If you can remember some of the names of the book, um, the book of Enoch, they tap into the book of Jas. I have a little bit of a list. Well, bear with me. Jasper, they tap into the book of Moses, and they tap into these dimensions. They have built altars, and they know how to be. Watch this. They know how to be. They know how to be 
trans, uh, trans multicultural. Huh? They know how to tap into these dimensions. Transcultural. There are also transcultural washes, and they're also transnational. They are multidimensional in the realm of the spirit. Right, the book of Jasper and Enoch. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. So they tap into these dimensions. And they begin to manipulate it. Mysteries. I'm talking about mysteries now. And why is it that they can divine the future? Why do you think that the, 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 the diviners were so effective? Even Nicodemus himself. Now, excuse me, not Nicodemus. Nostradamus. Nostradamus was able to do that. Do you know that Nostradamus wasn't even a prophet? Nostradamus was a crystal, crystal ball reader. Many of you may, might have not known that. He studied astrology. He was a, an observer of time. Nostradamus, I'm talking about. He was a crystal, he was a stargazer. He was an uh, uh, observer of times. He was also a crystal reader. And he was able to predict things in the future. Hundred centuries later, why? Because he studied the mysteries. He tapped into a realm. But when you're talking about the, 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 the pastors and the prophets and the leaders today and the Christians today, we are so surface level. So surface. We we don't even <laughs> we don't even know we don't even know God as we say we know him. We are still babes. How do I tap into multi-dimensionals, woman of God? Thank you for asking. You tap into multi-dimensionals by understanding the mind of God. You can only know the mind of God by knowing the word of God. I know Apostle uh, uh, Carlos and Lamar and I, we were talking recently, and we were talking about how it is so imperative that we have to get into the word. We're going to begin to look at the Greek text and begin to look at the Hebrew and begin to look at doctrine and look at the, look at it theologically correct. We have fallen away even from doctrine. We don't even pick up our word to read. We don't study to show ourselves a proof. Some of you are not on Clubhouse, but I'm on Clubhouse. And I'm telling you, there are some Hebrew Israelites on Clubhouse that will embarrass the Christians. I thought I knew something until I heard them open their mouth. They know their Bible from front to back and they can quote it and they tell us about the scriptures more than we can tell, more than we can quote it ourselves. They know Hebrew, they know Aramaic, they know, uh, uh, um, I'm telling you the truth. If any of you guys are on Clubhouse, you'll see how embarrassing it is. They know Hebrew, they know Aramaic, they, they, know, the, they know the Greek text. Pastor Grace, he, he joined us on there too. And they make the Christians look silly because we don't study to show ourselves a proof. We have to be good Bereans. You cannot be a ruler of the sky and operate in authority and dominion. I hear myself, I'm a prophet. I'm a pro How are you a prophet and you're still surfaced? I hear another great prophet, uh, uh, Apostle Oscar, Dr. Oscar said, how are you called to the nations? And, and, and you don't even know, you don't even know the, 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 the rules of the nations. Who authorized you? You don't even have rank in the realm of the spirit. That's why Apostle Lamar, the word of God is the DNA of God. Huh? You don't even know the laws of the land of another nation. And we're saying that we're called, we're called to nations. We don't even know God. We don't even know God. We haven't even built an altar. We don't even know the text. And we don't even say, okay, well, what are what are the Ten Commandments? Some of us, we can't even tell you off the top of our head. And we want to tell you Sunday school stuff. I, and I'm not, I'm going to be honest, Sunday school stuff, we can't even tell you. We don't even know the functions. I would have means to be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a teacher. It just sounds good to the ear. I went into one of the Hebrew Israelites group today and they, I'm telling you, it was such a disgrace. There was like the Christians don't even know nothing. And I, I couldn't even say it. it is the truth. It is the truth. I, I love what this man of God said. 
I'm going to get into the text. I'm going to be very practical with you today. He said, the prophet's power is wrapped up in the mantle upon taking on the predecessor and the mentor's mantle. First and the second kings. People don't want to be obedient, leadership to, or to be fathered. Absolutely. Absolutely. The rules and the cultures of different dispensations. But you know the interesting thing about that? When we're talking about mantles, mantles have a lot to do with mission. Mantles are missional. So the reason why God gives us mantles is to complete a task. Mantles, let me say this again, and I want to make this plain. Mantles are not your identity. Mantles has more to do with your mission. Okay? The man of God said it. It is to be fathered. So when you are, when, when God allows a mantle, you will have to also, when he allows you to give me to catch a mantle, you also have to be in the spirit of Elijah that was also multidimensional. What do I mean by that? The Bible says, Elijah, I know that you are a prophet. And I know that you walked with me. And I know that you are trained. Watch this. I know that you are trained. But... Only if you can see me go up. What am I saying? If you are going to be multidimensional as a prophet, you've got to see the, 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 the next one going up. You have to have insight, foresight, hindsight of the next move. It was not so much about, oh, let me carry, catch this mantle for me to carry on with the work of ministry. This mantle is for you to be missional, but it's also for you to be multidimensional. That's why Elijah was also able to be a, an individual that was a ruler of the sky. If you notice, a ruler of the sky, they are the ones that can see. They can see. I, I hope this, this text is not getting too... I hope you guys are understanding. Let me know if you are understanding me. I don't want to get... Because what I'm teaching tonight is very apostolic. This is apostolic teaching that I'm going into. And I don't want to thrust too much into it to make it too complicated. So as I said, they are the king of the uh, king of birds. We we're talking about apostolic and prophetic team. We we're talking about they are king of the birds. Huh? They carry dominion and authority. Number two, they are rulers of the sky. They are multidimensional. Huh? They are multidimensional. They are not one dimensional. They are transnational, transcultural. They are extensive. Huh? They are the ones that God has given a mandate. That's why they are ambassadors. They are envoys. They are called out sent ones. They are the ones that are sent. Huh? They are sent. Apostles, prophets, they are sent. Evangelists as well. But I'm talking about particularly the, the apostolic and the prophetic teams that work synergistically together. They are sent ones. They are the ones that have that particular rank to operate in a multi-dimensional sphere. Okay? Everyone does not have that grace. The other offices are just as relevant, but they, they don't carry that grace to be multi-dimensional. Teachers are very primary. Teachers are more foundational. One plant, one waters, God give the increase. The teachers are also very relevant. They are relevant in, uh, uh, in as it relates to doctrine. Okay, I'm just talking about the prophets tonight. But they are relevant as it relates to doctrine. Because in order to fulfill uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and 11, they have to edify. They are foundational teachers, okay? So that way, when we do go out, we are not theologically incorrect or irresponsible or textually uh, 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 um, incorrect. We're not integral textually. So the teachers are necessary. And we don't like teachers nowadays. Even the ministry of Christ, he was a teacher. They called him rabbi. They called him rabbi. Why did they call him rabbi? He went into the synagogues to teach. So they are very uh, imperative as it relates to washes, as it relates to the development of the of the of, of doctrine. Okay. Absolutely, teachers also help to shape belief systems. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Lever. My cousin's on here. God bless you. Absolutely. So they deal with the doctrine. Okay. Then we're talking about the pastors. 
that they are that they are that shepherding grace. They shepherd the flock. Evangelists are also missional, but we were talking about the apostles and prophets. And I'm not saying this in a hierarchical way, but they are the ones that have a particular rank. That's what we were talking about. Those who carry an apostolic grace, or they are operating in that office, or those who are in the prophetic office. They are multi-dimensional. They, they are the ones that have that grace to deal with principalities. One of the things that I see happening in the body of Christ, and I said they are rulers of the sky. One of the things that I see that happens in the body of Christ is that we thrust titles on people without weighing the warfare. I'm going to say that again. We thrust titles on people without weighing the warfare. I'm going to say that again. And Apostle Carlos Lamar, correct me if I'm wrong. You are my apostolic brother. You are on here. We thrust titles on people without weighing the warfare. Apostolic and prophetic are, are people, or tribe, or company. They deal with different levels of warfare. Why? Because of the ranking. Because of ranking. Why? Because uh, uh, apostles and prophets... There's a certain metron that they carry. There's a certain metron that they carry. They are governing grace. Okay, so when you carry a governing grace, it means that he gives you the grace to govern territories, to be a ruler of the sky, to deal with systems. So when a person says, I am a prophet, prophet doesn't mean just to prophesy or to be learned. That is very dangerous that we are taking on and the reason why I'm bringing this up because I'm seeing it so much on Clubhouse, a lot. And I'm bringing this up because it is very dangerous. And it's incurring injury to the body of Christ. Because I hear the conversation on Clubhouse and I see how many people are being injured by this. Because people are walking into an identity and DNA that they are not graced to govern and carry it. So people speak out of season. There are individuals that don't know how to live holy. When the demons attack them, they deal with certain levels of warfare because you don't carry that metron. Some of them are trying to even fight principalities and he didn't grace you for that. He didn't grace you for that. So what we think prophets are today is to say, thus saith the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. And I see it on, on Clubhouse. And I, I'm telling you the truth. And Pastor Graves always laugh when I say this. The Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord is saying this. And the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of... Because it looks good. Until we weigh the cost. Huh? To be a ruler of the sky. It means that you literally... See, we, we love it because it sounds great. But you don't know the warfare you are incurring in yourself. Because the fact that you are called, watch this, to be a spiritual mapper... Apostles and prophets are spiritual mappers. I'm going to do the teaching on that maybe another time. Spiritual mapping. To be a spiritual map, You will have the ability to be able to go into territories and regions and principalities and pull down strongholds. Are you hearing me? This is... <laughs> my cousin said it's nothing to play me. This is serious stuff. Serious stuff. You thought you were dealing with riches and warlocks. That's, that's nice. Wait until you start dealing with principalities. Even, watch this, even Daniel himself knew his limit. Daniel said, let me, let, me, let me go ahead and read it. Let me find the text. I'm going to pull it up for you tonight. And I hope that this teaching is blessing you. I hope that this teaching is, uh, is blessing you. And I'm going to try to limit my teaching a little bit shorter. Amen. Because I want to do keep you guys in, in a little bit more... I don't want to drain you guys with too much long, extensive teaching. I'm going to pray after this, but I want to make a few points. And this was uh, uh, in a time of King Cyrus and uh, 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 King Cyrus of Persia. And on that time, who? This was, uh, yeah, during the reign of, of King Cyrus of Persia. I'm going to go into the text here and I'm going to begin to read it uh, for you. It says in Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses 13. It says, watch this. It says, watch this. But the kingdom, but the prince of the kingdom, the, but the prince of the kingdom, huh, of Persia, we are dealing with what? A system. We're dealing with systems here. 
We're dealing with systems and principalities, okay? So I, 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 I'm going to break down what these principalities are. Let me just go ahead and define to you tonight. I'm not going to go too much into this, but let me go ahead and define to you tonight what a principality is since I'm bringing this up, okay? Uh, and I'm, I can get very detailed, but I'm not going to go that deep. I'm not going to go that... I'm not going to go deep diving tonight. Okay, so when you're dealing with principalities, we're talking about this, okay? Here's what we're dealing with. When you're talking about principalities, principalities are dominions. They're forces. They are forces. Huh? Dominions. Nations. You're dealing with princes. You're dealing with thrones. Okay? You're dealing with spiritual, invisible thrones in the realm of the spirit. What do I mean by that? You are dealing with ancient powers. Okay? You are dealing with powers that has, that is older than you are. So here we are in this dispensation and we get excited. I'm a merging prophet. That is wonderful. But not until you start dealing with ancient powers and systems and thrones then you begin to understand the magnitude of that okay everyone is not authorized to go walk up in brazil huh you can't go walking walking up in brazil with their witchcraft is at a different level when you're doing high-ranking witches satanic priests i don't even want to get into that teaching i'm going to say that for another i'm going to say that for an, my book <laughs> okay you don't, we're tapping into realms that we do not know what we're asking for. So before anybody throws an assignment on you, make sure you weigh the cost. Make sure you weigh the cost. So I'm going to say that again. We're dealing with forces. He, uh, uh, he says, yes, apostles and prophets, generals who are frontline warriors, special forces in God's army who take the brunt of the battle. Absolutely. And I did this teaching, and I'm going to just reiterate it. So principalities are forces and dominions. We're dealing with nations, governments, high-ranking priests. We're dealing with thrones. We're dealing with generals, huh? In the realm of the spirit. Um, I spoke about the eagles and the ox anointing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit that. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get back to also get back to um, the prince of Persia. But I want to share this with you real quickly. I want to share this with you real quickly. One of the things that I began to share uh, uh, when I ministered for the men of God, I said that they are men of God. They are armed forces, which means that apostles and prophets, they carry what? They carry, they carry spiritual intelligence. There is intel that they carry in the realm of the spirit. So when I say mysteries, I'm relating to intel that they deal with satanic systems and demonic resistance. They operate at a certain jurisdictional authority. Everybody is not given jurisdiction. So even Daniel himself understood, and I want to get too deep. Daniel himself understood that. He said it like this. He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia system, principality, which stood me one and 20 days. 21 days. Now he prayed, he fasted, he did all these things. But lo, what did he have to do? He understood his spear. He understood his spear. Hey, God bless you, Chavoni. God bless you, Marcia. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. He says, it withstood me. So even though he fasted and he prayed, he said, all right, I am out of my jurisdiction. There are some of us, amen, that operate outside of our jurisdiction. There are certain places in the realm of the spirit that we are not legally authorized to go. Now, witches and warlocks, they tap into realms through, I don't know why I'm going this direction, tap into realms through astral projection. They know how to tap, but even some of them can't tap into that realm. So even Michael himself understood this. He understood this because a prince of Persia withstood him. And he said, what? What did he do? He said, but lo, let me call on Michael the archangel. Watch this. There are certain 
only if you're angels that are legally allowed in certain dimensions. So where the apostles and the prophets cannot go jurisdictionally, only the uh, angels are sanctioned to go in that place. So we need to also understand that although we are rulers of the sky, we need to know that there are certain dimensions in the realm of the spirit that we cannot go. There are thrones that we cannot access. Why? Because God did not marshal us there. We have to only be marshaled at a certain place. The, even those places, it is out of the realm of, 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 of it's only for celestial beings. There are certain dimensions that are only for celestial beings and not for carnal beings. Okay? It is not for carnal beings. And so watch this. The Michael Archangel, the one of the chief princes. So when you are talking about angels, they're not just these little pretty fluffy angels. No, this was a, he's a warring angel. I'm going to do a, maybe, I'm not even going to do no teaching. Uh, I did a teaching before. I'm not even going to get deep in that. There are different angels for different, different types of things. They have different jurisdictions. You're not allowed to operate in different places, okay? But Michael Archangel is a warring angel. He's a warring angel, and he's one of the chief princes, okay? Even, I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm, I'm not, trying not to go too deep, because I, I don't want to reveal too much. <clears throat> so what he says, he came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. He was arrested spiritually. He was incarcerated spiritually. Even Michael, the archangel, had to contend 21 days. 21 days. Which simply means, watch this, he had to call on that particular angel. Because if any other angel, why am I going in this direction? If any other angel would have gone, have gone they would have been incarcerated in that in that in that realm because certain angels carry certain keys they carry certain bowls they carry certain dominion they carry certain thrones that's why the angels that we have today are not angels in the book of revelation there are different functions of them so where we cannot uh, uh, cohabitate in the realm of spirit there are angels that go to that dimension. That's why it says in Psalms 30, uh, 91, and he shall give his what? Angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, lest thy dash thy foot against a stone. What he was saying is this. I am giving them jurisdictional authority to war on your behalf, to fight against principalities that you are unable to fight. Huh? He said, I give you power over... I, I, I give you power of author, uh, and authority over serpents and scorpions, huh? Which means that we have powers over, uh, um, uh, uh, we have power over certain, uh, uh, certain spirits, but we do not have the power over certain principalities. Yes, many of us can war and pull on strongholds, but I'm going to talk to you about it again. There are, when we're talking about strongmen, we're talking about principalities, okay? This is a different level of teaching. I don't want to open your mind up too much to that because there are some uh, individuals on here that may not be able to handle that kind of teaching. I don't want to um, solicit unnecessary warfare uh, on some of you guys' behalf. So I'm going to keep it very... I'm, I'm sharing, but I'm trying to be very cordial about it at the same time. Because I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to cause you to tap into... A dimension that you're not equipped and prepared for. Okay? So we're talking about the Prince of Persia. We're talking about thrones here. We're talking about a th we're talking about thrones. And, and so I'm going to say it again. <clears throat> I'm just going to reiterate. So they are rulers of the sky. I'm going to finish with, uh, I'm going to finish with two more points. I'm going to finish there. They're rulers of the sky. Uh, they're the eagles and the ox. But they're also what? There are conquerors of serpents. I didn't get to finish it last time. There are conquerors of serpents. So when we are talking about uh, apostles and prophets, 
What we think that they are today, they're not. Okay? Conquerors of serpents. What did he say? I, uh, I, he said, I, I give you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall my enemies harm you. Yes, Vicky. And by the way, they're not spirits. They're principality. So I'm going to give you an example. A lot of times people say, spirits, hey, God bless you. I see uh, my brother on here, Broderick. Thank you for joining me. Kingdom greetings and grace and peace be unto you. So when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about uh, spirits that possesses people, we're not talking about disembodied spirits. Okay, so we're not talking about disembodied spirits. That's what that's that's different uh, from our spirits that oppress or possess. Okay, individuals, those are disembodied spirits. We're talking about uh, principalities now, and, and we have already defined what that what that is. Okay, we're talking about systems, systems. Okay, we're not talking about our spirits that come by night and these little fluff fluffs. No, we're talking about systems. Even Jehu himself was also a, a prophet that was a sent. He was an envoy. He was an ambassador. He was sent to deal with a Jezebelic system. Why? Because you're dealing with a kingdom. You're dealing with a kingdom. You're dealing with thrones. You're dealing with, as I said before, you're dealing with something that has outlived you. Ancient, ancient powers that you are not privy to. So it requires celestial beings to be able to deal with certain ancient powers. Are oh, you hearing me? They are conquerors of serpents. What do I mean by that? Ugh, I want to do a teaching so bad, I think I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to do a teaching next week that I think that you guys are really, really, really going to like. I may continue with this and I may, I may not. But I, I'm going to probably, I'm not going to say it yet. But we're con uh, conquerors of serpents. What does that mean? When you're talking about conquerors of serpents, he's also saying to the body of Christ, when, when Satan, when, when the, uh, Lucifer had fallen, when he's fallen into, into uh, when God cast him out, okay? When he cast him out, uh, out of heaven, what happened is that the Bible says that he now lost his, um, he has lost certain functions, not the gifts, but he has lost his, they had a, a, a godly function, right? And then he was cast into the garden. His name began to change, right? And so he also had given us authority, authority over serpents. I'm not going to go into the long text today. He has given us authority. He said the heel of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent, which means that I have now given my church an authority and authority the church to deal with these spirits of Leviathan and Python. What does that relate to? The Python spirit. I don't want to go too deep, but the Python spirit. Because watch this. When you're talking about that spirit of Python, remember, I want you to understand this. He was cast out of heaven. This is so good. He was cast out of heaven, but watch this. Before humans came, there, what happened? There was water upon the firmament, which means that he's also a master of the waters. This is where we get the marine kingdom from. I don't know why I'm going this direction, and I think I'm going to slow down with this. He's also a master of the sky and also a master of the waters. Are you hearing me tonight? You know what, oh God, I, I can't go deep because God is not allowing me to. Because there are a lot of things that I'm saving for, for um, certain things that I don't want to go too deep. And then I'm trying to protect most individuals on the broadcast because I don't want to go too deep. And it, it starts to solicit unnecessary warfare. But um, I can go very, very deep into spiritual warfare because I study demonology. I do this all day long. And this is my realm. But I, I, I'm telling you. So he said, I've given them authority, right? So you're not, you're now dealing with the spirits of Python. You're dealing with the marine kingdom. He has given the church that power, okay? So he said, I allow you now to be conquerors of serpents, of serpents. 
when you are dealing with Python, you're dealing with Leviathan. He, Leviathan is also a prince, okay? So he's also principality. He's a prince. She said, it's a sneak peek. I think my cousin on here knows. You know what this is about, but I'm telling you, girl, it's deep. He's also a prince, okay? He's also a prince. He's ancient spirit. But he's saying that the church today, I'm giving them power over these ancient spirits. What? With the help of celestial beings, angels, right? The angels, God bless you. I love you too. God bless you. Thank you for covering me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, he's giving us power over that as well. But I said there's so only certain spirits. Now, this is why he says I oh for the church. Now, some people may argue to be theologically correct. Some people may say, where do you see fivefold ministry? Um, the term in the Bible. I'm gonna be honest with you. That term is not in the Bible. So, a lot of people may say, oh how. You know, what are you talking about? God's going to give the church and, and the apostles and the prophets how they're going to rise up in this hour and bring that reformation to bring that divine realignment and to be able to plow the grounds and, and, and start to deal with the construct and the foundations and deal with these thrones and principalities. Yes, God will allow them to do that. But watch this. There are some that may even argue. Where do you see fivefold ministry in the Bible? Uh, it is not, the term is not in the Bible. The term is not in the Bible, but we do see where Apostle Paul makes references. And that was only for the, 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 the foundation and the construct of the church. Okay? Right. Uh, neither is Trinity, to be theologically correct. <laughs> uh, neither is the word Trinity there. But still, nevertheless, he has given us that blueprint. This is what I'm talking about. The Apostle Paul received blueprint. And only those who carry a certain grace carries that mystery and that revelation. Okay? That blueprint to be able to... Uh, what must we do to literally deal with these end time uh, our powers that we are confronted with today that is fighting against the church? So that's what it means to be a conqueror of serpents. So I spoke about being uh, rulers of the sky where we deal with, where we deal with principalities. And we also spoke about being conquerors of serpents where we fight dealing with the foundation. Okay? Dealing with foundation. And I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here because there's so much I want to share. Now, if there's any questions as it relates to what I said on tonight, I mentioned um, uh, about how eagles that gods are raising up the eagles and the ox okay um the ox represents the apostolic ministry the eagles represents the prophetic ministry i spoke uh, more about the eagles on tonight that they are the king of the birds that they are conquerors of serpents that they are rulers of the sky and how they operate how they are trans um, national and they are one that are able to operate in apostolic spirits. They're able to operate in the seven mountains of the Lord. They are able to go into territories and regions and deal with certain powers. Um, the difference between um, just being with the, each functions of the fivefold ministry and their and their legal authority that they have with dealing with certain certain powers. Okay. Now I know people may say, "Oh, there is no hierarchy in the body of Christ." You know, God calls us all to do this. I'm going to debunk that philosophy. Okay, I'm going to debunk that philosophy. Scripture does say, okay, let me, let me give you scripture so that way you're not thinking that I'm not being textually integral. Let me give you scriptures here. <clears throat> okay, so let me give you a scripture here. And I'm, I'm just wanna, I, I just wanna tell you, and the reason why I'm bringing this up because I see this on the clubhouse a lot, and and people are uh, operate at a certain level that they're not supposed to, and there are so many things happening, and happen to people because they operate in a in a dimension that God did not call them to. Okay, so the Bible says it like this. The Bible says it in Mark, Mark 16, 17, 18. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. 
We're talking about authority here. Follow them that believe, right? In my name, they shall cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now that is true. Every believer, every believer has that measure of authority that God has given us. Why? The fact that we are born again believers and we are regenerated believers and the Holy Spirit operates in and through us. And Apostle Lamar, you can help me out if you want to. Um, operate in and through us. We all have that ability to do that. Why? He gives us the ability is to be able to fulfill Ephesians 4, 11, to be able to fulfill Matthew 28, which is the great commission. So if God has given us a great commission, he gives us that authority. But as I said in retrospect, as I said in retrospect, there's a certain level, there's a certain ranking in the realm of the spirit that everyone is not graced to deal with. Okay? How do I know that? Let me give you, let me give you scripture here. And I'm going to provide scriptures because I don't want to say I'm just talking off the top of my head. Okay? I'm going to give you scriptures. All right. In Acts 19 verses 14 through 16. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew. Okay? And a chief of the priests which did so. Who was he? <laughs> he was the chief of the priests. What do I mean by that? I see this on Clubhouse. <sighs> there are a lot of people, because they believe they have a title, that, oh yeah, I can do it too. And I, I, I try to be very diplomatic, but very stern, even when I'm on that app. Because we have a Me Too generation. Because we are a merging generation. We have this Me Too movement. That's happening in the body of Christ. Oh, me too. I can do it too. I can do it too. And you have not been graced. So the seventh son of Sceva, he was a priest. Okay? A priest that was not authorized to cast out this demon. He wasn't authorized. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? But if you go to the verse before that, it said he was a priest. <laughs> but watch this. But who are you? Because in the realm of the spirit, demons don't recognize titles. They recognize rank. And I know that's a bombshell. A lot of people may say, oh, but I'm a pastor. I'm a this and I'm that and I'm this. That's wonderful. They don't recognize titles. Titles or as I said, there's a certain metron. Titles are what's used as a, um, as a metron to be missional. It, it, it describes your function. But it doesn't say anything about your rank. Okay? Right. So he operated from an illegal place in the realm of the spirit. He says, and Paul and Abba, who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This is a whole spiritual warfare teaching within itself. So as I said, there's a certain metrons that apostles and prophets carry because there's a governing grace. A governing grace. And you can argue me with this. Please, you can argue if there's any questions. I will explain, I would explain to you the best way I know how why I say that. Apostles and prophets, they carry governing grace. Okay? I see the bearded man, he's showing me hearts and light. <laughs> uh, Alan, I'm not even gonna say his name. Alan, Alan Lynn. That's how she, <laughs> uh, my cousin says, that's how folks get yoked up, stepping into something they are not graced for. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to open the floor up for questions and then I'll get into, um, praying for many of you. If there's any, any, any questions for me, he said, love the teaching. Thank you so much. 
if there's any questions, please go ahead and ask me now. So tonight, I talked about the eagle and the ox. I talked about a little bit. I was a little bit all over the place tonight, but I was just going with the wind of the Holy Spirit. I talked about the eagle, eagle and the ox, the function of the, um, the apostles and prophets, why they are governing grace, how they carry um, a certain level of authority to deal with principalities. Um, I talked about how uh, prophets and apostles, <clears throat> excuse me, how apostles and the prophets that they are um, transcultural, they're transnational. Uh, they are the ones that are, are, are sent and sanctioned into territories, regions, nations, and why they have that ranking and grace to deal with that. Because everyone is not called to deal with systems. Okay? Watch this. Even Elijah himself. Elijah, watch this. Elijah was anointed to deal with altars. But he was not anointed to deal with that system of Jezebel. So it doesn't make you less insignificant. It just means that you just know what your assignment is. So if your assignment, you are called for this, then know your metron and what God has called you to. Elijah, how do we know if we're called as the eagle or ox, apostle or prophet? Oh, great question. All right, let me, let me get into that for one second. So Elijah was not graced to deal with that system, okay, of Jezebel. He was anointed to deal with the altars. But Jehu, watch this, Jehu, let me go into this real quickly and I'm going to um, answer the men of God's question. Jehu was anointed to deal with that system. What do I mean? He carried a different grace. He wasn't an, another uh, insignificant because he was one of the other prophets, but he was still great. So it doesn't matter if you're a major or minor, okay? It just means that what he was graced for, okay? And I said about Jehu, that Jehu, watch this, Jehu was, he functioned as a commander of the army of Ahab. So Jehu was anointed to deal with uh, that Jezebelic system. Why? Because he served as a commander. He had to learn the art of war of what it meant to be under a system, to conquer a system. What do I mean by that? If you have not, I'm going to say that again. Let me repeat it. You have to learn what it meant to be under a system to conquer a system. Elijah did not come from that system. Obadiah was under that system. Watch this. That's why Obadiah was graced to cover the prophets. Obadiah was graced to cover the prophets. Jehu was graced to deal with that system because he functioned as a commander in the army. Commander is not a person of of low ranking okay so what am i saying to you now uh, I, I i i i've seen people on clubhouse i'm being honest with you oh i'm gonna bust the devil up go ahead and bust him up and you ain't never been on that system so now you're tapping into oh i'm gonna i heard i heard somebody say oh the lord gave me a dream and the lord says i, I was called to be a prof uh, an apostle and yeah he called me to deal with principalities now, for the life of me, only a person who is presumptuous and false apostles and prophets will only dare to run to something like that. You, it is a very presumptuous thing to want to run into something like that. I, I don't know. I know Apostle Lamar's like, I don't want it. You know, if nobody wants, because I am telling you, when you are dealing with certain levels of warfare, and I know this may not seem like, oh, it's all about warfare. Yet it's true. Yes, God gives us times of refreshing. But the fact that we are in this mortal body, we will forever deal with warfare. I don't know what kind of theology they're teaching you. You will forever deal with warfare because you are in your mortal body. The, the, the laws of the spirit, it wars against the laws of the, the, um, the, the, laws of the flesh, wars against the spirit. You will forever deal with it. Because these are these spirits do not die. They're timeless. They're ageless. Until 
the end of this age stops, we will forever deal with that. Okay? So I want to I want to share that. So God anointed Jehu. He anointed Jehu to deal with that system. So if you did not go through a certain level of warfare to understand it, it is very dangerous to tap into a realm that you have not been a part of. There are times that there are times that even God, I wanted to study certain things that God said, no, not yet. Hold off. Don't tap into that yet. Why? Because he has to mature me. He has to mature me for that. It's the same thing with Elijah and Elijah. You need, you need the weight to carry the weight. I'm going to say that again. You need the weight to carry the weight. What do I mean by that? Elijah, no, you need three kinds of weight. Let's put it this way. And I'm going to end with this and answer the man of God's question. You need three kinds of weight. The W-A-I-T, okay? Before Elisha could take Elijah's mantle, he needed to W-A-I-T, wait. He needed to wait so that he goes through the process. Because process is what gives you that spiritual fortitude. It equips you. It causes you to be proficient. There are certain processes in life that you have to be able to go through to be able to deal with the next level of weight. So you have to W-A-I-T first. Then when he saw, then when he uh, went through the process, he needed the weight. So he developed a spiritual weight, weightiness. He knew what it meant to carry the glory. He knew what it meant to carry uh, 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 the anointing because he himself became anointed. The weight of the glory, the weight of ministry. Then he was able to carry. So you have the weight, like the weighty presence. So you have the first weight, W A I T, a meaning process. Number two, weight, like the weighty presence of God, which means the anointing, W A W E I G H T Y, the weighty presence. And then he also, he needed the Wait to carry the mantle, the W-E-I-G-H-T. He needed the weight. This is how you know that you are ready to operate in a certain dimension. Okay, so um, I hope I um, answered your question, the men of God question. How do you know that you are called to be an apostle and prophet? Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to actually, I have some things planned. That I said on last week, so I'm not going to dive too much into this. Um, because the Lord did tell me, stop giving away. He's, let me give you, let me find the right words. He said to me, and I'm not saying this for you guys in the broadcasting. But he shared with me, he says, be wise. Uh, because it's your ministry. So, just like Jesus went about teaching, he cast his pearls among swines. Right? And so, he was strategic in how he did certain things. All right, so I'm being a little strategic. I'm being a little bit strategic here. Um, you know, sometimes people don't value gems, if, if that makes any sense. So, um, you know, you have the TD Jakes and you have all these people. They have classes. They have classes and they do, they put this stuff in their book. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do what they do. <laughs> I'm going to be smart. Okay? And here Madeline said, come on, yes. Because I've seen a lot of people that I've, I've heard my teaching and then I heard another prolific preacher with it. And when they did it, it blew up. And I know what I said first. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised they actually watch you. You'll be surprised they actually watch you. They hear you. They don't think they don't hear you. Even when I'm on Clubhouse and I see all these profound preachers and we, and we wind up on the same platform... Oh yeah, I know you, woman of God. I've seen you before on, on Facebook. They never say hi, but they watch you. They hear your revelation. But because they have the credibility, they say the same thing you say. They take it in, put it in their book, and guess what? They hosanna them, and they don't, they don't, they ignore you because you're Jenny from the block. That's right, woman of God. That's the word I'm looking for. Trademark your stuff. That, uh, that, okay, thank you. There goes the word. <laughs> 
So the Lord told me to be a little bit wiser. And I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to do exactly that. He said, yes, it's happened to me many times. So I'm not even going to go too deep. That's why I keep saying I'm trying not to go too deep. I try not to go too deep. Because there's a lot of things that I, 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 I'm yet to do that I have not done. And I'm telling you, I've, and I'm not diminishing anyone, but I've seen people keep webinars and classes. And, and I'm like, huh? you know, I'm not really trying to beat anybody up, but I'm like, what in the world? You know, you'd be surprised, but because a name is attached to it, people just run to it. You know, let, let, let another preacher say, uh, say something, catchphrase. And then yet the other preachers say it or forget it. They don't know you because you don't have, you don't have the, the, the prestige to go with it. Okay, so I'm being smart. And the Holy Spirit told me one day, and I'm going to pray. The Holy Spirit said to me one day, people only value what they equally invest in. Okay? People only value what they equally invest in. I'm going to say it again. And I, I just want to encourage all of you with that. You know, um, I know it sounds, it may sound like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, then the gospel of Jesus Christ is free. And the gospel of the, you know, people do that. No, that's not how this works. Okay. You got to be in ministry long enough to know that's not how this works. Okay. Salvation is free. Ministry is not. <laughs> it's not. Believe me. You got to be around the block for a few times to, to understand the nature. Okay, any other questions? I want to pray. If this message was a blessing to you, okay, I, I'm going to open up the, the, uh, the forum to, uh, for any questions. I will pray for some of you. Amen. Also, um, if this message has blessed you, um, just go ahead uh, and be a blessing to this ministry. As many of you know, uh, I, I also do great things. In this ministry, I do have my website, so guys, go ahead and visit that. You know, if you can put it up for me, it is www.kingdomglobalimpactnetwork.org. I'm going to say that again, so you can look a little bit more about my ministry, so I don't have to sit on here to plead with you and tell you what the ministry is all about. You can now go to the website and see that this ministry is not just an online ministry. Um, it is not something that I, I'm just on here just to talk. Um, just for a little recognition. I'm not a fly-by-night, okay? Um, so you can go to www.kingdomglobalimpactnetwork.org and you can learn a little bit more about um, Kingdom Global Impact Network and what are some of the things that we're looking to do, some of our goals, what we need to accomplish, okay? But because it is a network, we rely on your giving uh, to be able to sustain this ministry. So I want you to understand that there is nothing too small, too great. I do appreciate all of you guys and your giving. Uh, please also, I would uh, admonish you, do not wait till I pray and prophesy to give, okay? Because I don't want that to leave a negative connotation on myself. I don't want to pray and then prophesy, then it looks like I'm some kind of soothsayer. I don't do that, okay? Don't wait to that moment till you hear a word. Because I, I, I want to literally be, be um, I really want to challenge the people not to think that way. We're in a generation that, oh, if I hear a prophetic word, then I give. No, that's what soothsayers do, okay? That's what false prophets do. We don't give you a, a prayer or prophecy or prophetic word and then you give. This generation has got it all wrong. We, 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 we got this thing all mixed up. So please, I, I, I want you to be able to do it out of the willingness of your heart as the Holy Spirit leads you because you heard good doctrinal teaching. Because you heard the word of the Lord and not because I prophesied to you. Okay? So um, I'm going to admonish you. There are 36 of you on the broadcasting. I'm going to challenge you all to uh, do that if you can for me. And I greatly appreciate it. Uh, which is also why I'm going to put my stuff in books. Right? <clears throat> I'm going to put my stuff in books so I don't have to be on the broadcasting and having to be asking when I don't, shouldn't have to ask. Your pastors in your local church should not have to ask. Those who pour out and labor should not have to ask. That is the reality. The Bible says do not muzzle the ox. We shouldn't have to ask. We have our, our pastors. We have pastors on the line. You know, if we have we give, we don't, we don't, we just don't. Then this is not applicable to you. Okay, but I just want to give you guys that kingdom uh, uh, mindset and that kingdom um, 
perspective. All right? So um, I did see one person give. Thank you so much for your giving. Everything is greatly appreciated. It is value. I want you to know that I thank you so much for, uh, for that one person that gave. Amen. And you do understand the value of this message and the value of this teaching. So I thank you so much for those of you who said, I, I don't have it tonight. It is okay. I appreciate it. But I just want to be able to teach that kingdom principle. All right. So are there any prayer requests tonight? Let me go ahead and pray for you. Then I'm going to shut it down. Okay. Any prayer requests on tonight? Any prayer requests on tonight? And also, some of you may not see me on, um, club, um, on Facebook as much. I have been extending my reach. So some of you may say, you know, oh, I don't see her on Clubhouse. People have been writing me and say they don't see me on Clubhouse. I'm being honest with you. God told me, he told me to um, begin to expand my network and begin to reach out to other audiences um, because I don't want to be a pressure to only those who are on Facebook alone. Okay? On Facebook alone. I don't want to be a pressure. So I'm going to start being on Instagram. I'm going to start doing videos there. I'm going to start doing video. I'm doing teaching on Clubhouse. I'm going to start doing videos maybe on Facebook, but I'm branching out. So which means because I have to branch out, uh, it, it's, my time will become a little bit more limited. But nevertheless, I do appreciate all those who are a part of this and those who have been faithful. I appreciate every single one of you. I really I appreciate you. I thank God for all of you. You're giving. Like I said, because I don't want to be a burden. That's why I only come on once a week. Some people, someone said to me, hey, oh God, can you come on twice a week? I'll only do that when I'm led of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to come on here because I'm only here just to, I'm only here just to, um, you know, just to bring a word. I see people do that. I see people come on here just because they want to collect money and go. I don't want to do that. I, I, before so I shut it down I said God find another way because I, I'm not going to let the people of God make me into some kind of false prophet I will not do it I will not do it for the life of me so I just wanted to just say that but it all, I'm, the only reason why I'm rambling because I'm waiting for you guys to put the request up <laughs> so if there's any prayer requests um, I will take them but if not it is okay it is okay, but I wanted to share that. So thank you. Um, uh, you can find me on YouTube under the name Prophetess Dehima McLean. Okay, Prophetess Dehima McLean. Please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on um, on Clubhouse on the name Dehima McLean. I'm gonna start doing rooms on there. I've done maybe three. I'm gonna probably do a little bit more. Dehima McLean on Clubhouse. On YouTube is Prophetess Dehima McLean. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Dehima McLean Ministries, and ultimately, please visit the website. I um I don't I'm gonna post it up for you, okay? So you can go ahead and visit it as well. All right. So I don't want to talk your ear off. I think that was my time. Amen. Um, for those of you who are requesting prayer before I go, I don't want to shut it down before I take the prayer request. Okay. I just wanted to share that. So I only come on once a week because I don't want to be a burden to anybody. Okay, I, I try not to, I know the people who are on here are always on here with me. So I only come on once a week where it is realistic. So that way you can say, you know what, okay, she's only on once a week. I, I'm going to, because this ministry hasn't been a blessing, I will give towards this or that. So I try to be very mindful, okay? So no prayer request. All right, let me go ahead and pray over the seed of those who gave. So, Father God, I thank you, oh God, for those uh, individuals that have gave on tonight. Father God, I pray right now, God, that you begin to bless them. Pray for every person that had to give and those that did not have to give. Every faithful supporter, every person that even came and sat on the live broadcast just to listen, God. I pray that they were edified. I pray that they were blessed, God. I thank you right now that you're doing a new thing in them. God, I pray that they will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Lord God, open up supernatural doors on behalf, oh God, that no man can shut. According to Revelation chapter 3 and 8. God, I thank you right now, oh God, that you know the thoughts that you think towards them. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To 
to give them an expected end. Father God, I pray right now, oh God, that you are now, oh God, causing a breakthrough, unprecedented favor, oh God, to begin to manifest on their behalf. Lord God, everything that they are believing you for, God, I pray that God, that you are, oh God, begin to elevate them in the realm of spirit. I pray for spiritual promotion, oh God, and let them be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Oh God, I even break the spirit of poverty from all of their lives, spirit of lack from all of our lives, God. And I thank you right now that you are giving us power, oh God, not only within the church, but also power to gain wealth. Give us innovative ideas, witty inventions. Oh God, Lord God, to be able, hallelujah, to be able to advance. Give your people multiple streams of income. Lord God, help us to operate in a level of authority, not only as it relates to our finances, but also with the anointing, also what you have called us to do. I thank you right now for every pastor, every person, every individual that I have given tonight. And God, to let the seed, oh God, begin to move on your behalf. I pray, oh God, that testimony shall come forth, that a sick body shall be healed, that God, the minds that are tormented, that they shall be healed, that God, those that are dealing with warfare, oh God, that the enemy will no longer be able to oppress them, oppress their life, oppress their family, oppress their body, oh God, even causing affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, even for the pastors that are on the broadcasting, our pastor, God, I pray strength unto them. I pray strength even unto them, even to the churches. Lord God, allow us to be a pillar and a city set upon a hill. Oh God, that cannot be hidden. I pray for our pastors even now. I pray for Christ Community Church. I pray right now also for Apostle Carlos Lamar and his church. I pray for Apostle Jeffrey and his church. I pray for every partner on the broadcasting that gave tonight. And those that didn't have to give, even the listeners. Lord God, I pray that you touch them. I pray that you bless them. Lord God, 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 let them be. Hallelujah. The lenders are not the borrowers. Oh God, let their blessings overtake them. Let their vast begin to overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you honor the words of your prophet. And I thank you that you are doing it unto them now. So let it be, oh God, and establish in the heavens. Lord God, I pray, oh Father God, hallelujah, that they shall begin to experience abundance and overflow. That Lord God, you shall do a new thing in them. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the supernatural outpouring in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't see no comments actually. I'm not sure. I, the comments have stopped. So maybe if you're putting up comments, I'm not seeing absolutely none here. <clears throat> I'm not seeing none. Let me go ahead and check Facebook. I'm not seeing no comments. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for these your people tonight. Thank you for these your people tonight, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord. I'm not seeing any comments, any comments. But thank you, Lord. I bless your people tonight. I bless your people tonight, guys. All right. Um, it looks like everything froze on me. So that is my night. I definitely will come back maybe Sunday as if the Holy Spirit leads. And I will pray with and for many of you. All right. I will also pray over your seed. Um, if you wanted a prayer, uh, uh, you can also reach out to me and I will touch base with you. All right. I love you. Jesus Christ love you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is accept him in your heart. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. All right, guys. I love you. Jesus Christ love you. My friends, live in the expectancy of God. Shalom.